Hello everyone. This short video is about a small stack tutorial to model a beam list over beam connection. I got it. The very first question would be whether it is necessary to know this and the answer is absolutely yes. Because in a steel building you would have come across these particular situation where we will be using a jack beam to support a handicap rafter. So like uh, in cases where we can't provide a steel column, we used to go with a beam type arrangement and our mainframe rafters would be resting over these type of jack beams. So how to model these things in STAT? And one more example is like a similar jack beam instead of at the ends, it, now it is like uh, at the middle. A jack beam is there and our mainframe or, or an handicap frame is resting over this particular jack beam. And uh, another condition is like a, a mezzanine beam resting over another beam. So if you could see here, like uh, the top beam is overhand above the bottom beam. So how to model these type of condition in STAD? Usually, so like uh, say we have the bottom beam and the top beam, usually we used to connect uh, these two beams with a small stub for the force transfer and we apply the loads on the top member so that through this stub, the force gets transferred to the bottom member. Uh, this is what which most of the engineers would be doing in practice but there is an effective way to achieve this first of all i will show you the result for this particular arrangement so i didn't apply much of a load for demonstration purpose i just added self weight and one point load at the middle so i'm going to analyze the model and the results so like yes we could see because of the force in the top beam through the member like that force gets transferred to the bottom beam and you can see the deflected chip here if you see the bending moment yeah it is shared between both the beams right so how can we achieve this condition without this particular stub actually delete this stub now if you go to specification stab and under node you will be having add control and dependent specification so what you have to do is like add a relationship the control node would be the bottom node for that we have to see the node number so my bottom node number is 2 we go to nodes add control dependent my control node is 2 and it is not rigid it is going to allow the vertical load to pass through that means whatever like vertical reaction which is coming that vertical reaction will be transferred from the top beam to the bottom beam so I just added the condition. So this bit is in the specification tab now. What we have to do is like we have to assign this specification to our top node. So use cursor to assign and I'm assigning it to fifth node. That's all. So it is over. Now if we run the analysis and see we have to get the same results as previous. So I'm moving to the post processing. And yeah, as you could see because of the force in the top beam, the bottom member is getting deflected as well as the moments are getting transferred. This is an efficient way of modeling a beam restore beam condition or a jack beam like or a handicap beam resting over a jack beam condition. Hope it is useful. So next time if you're modeling a jack beam or a mezzanine beam where like one beam rest over other, please do use specifications, nodes, add control and dependent specification. With this like uh, we can efficiently choose what are the forces we need to allow and which one we need to restrict. And that's all for this video. If you like this and want to see more such videos, please do subscribe.